<clears throat> uh, thank you, Chair, and uh, thank you to IDSA for inviting me here this week. Um, so, so far we've heard uh, a lot of presentations about the threats that CyberSafe presents. Um, I'd like today to discuss one area where the opportunities are great, that being the digital economy. The Asia-Pacific region is currently the powerhouse of the global economy, accounting for one-third of total growth in a time of economic weakness elsewhere in the world. The digital economy provides significant opportunity to unlock further growth, supporting regional and global economic expansion, as well as the achievement of critical development goals on the path to reducing the regional population living under the poverty line, currently numbering 2 billion people. Unlocking further digital opportunities will require governments and other stakeholders to overcome several bar barriers. Today I will discuss three key barriers. A lack of connectivity in some countries, a lack of trust in cyberspace, and regulatory and taxation frameworks that discourage startups or deter their investors. The digital economy describes the global network of economic and social activities enabled by digital technologies. The internet, mobile networks and digital sensor networks and their associated technologies such as big data analytics can increase business productivity and open access to new markets and opportunities not previously available. Looking forward to 2030, McKinsey estimates that the Asia Pacific's digital economy will be worth between 220 and 625 billion US dollars, constituting between 4 and 12 percent of the region's projected total GDP. By 2030, it is also estimated that two thirds of the world's middle class will live in the Asia Pacific, half a billion of which will be in India alone. In Australia, the digital economy accounts for 5 percent of GDP, making it a bigger contributor to the overall economy than agriculture and the retail industry combined. The internet has seen many new business opportunities emerge, such as the Philippines call center and data processing industry, which created 8.4 billion US dollars of revenue and employed half a million people in 2012. In Vietnam, digital startups are worth an estimated 4 billion US dollars in 2015. Globally, the cybersecurity market was worth 75 billion US dollars in 2015 and is expected to reach 170 billion by 2020. Adoption of innovative and disruptive business models that cyberspace enables is critical for countries that, until now, have relied on particular economic sectors, such as tourism and natural resources, to sustain their economy. Examples include Brunei, which is critically reliant on oil production, and Australia, where economic growth has been sustained by our exports of coal, iron ore and other minerals to emerging Asian economies. The digital economy also has the potential to assist in reducing the amount of people living in poverty in the Asia-Pacific. Use of digital platforms can deliver vital education and services to less developed countries and regions. Digital commerce opens up these areas to distant markets and creates new higher value jobs. But the digital economic change will not come without some difficult transitions, as traditional roles change or disappear, requiring retraining or new jobs to fill the gaps. Greater economic efficiency and new business models are also necessary to address the region's emerging demographic constraints. The working age population in the region has peaked, and age societies will soon proliferate. The slowing birth rate in China and Vietnam means they may only briefly enjoy the benefits of a large working class population. And in Japan, the continued weakness of its economy and its continually declining working population pose critical economic challenges. As I noted earlier, there are several barriers that, if overcome, could unlock the greater potential of the digital economy. The Asia-Pacific is simultaneously home to some of the most advanced digital markets and the least advanced, an issue that ASPE has observed in our annual cyber maturity report. South Korea and Singapore have particularly benefited from the digital economy, built on strong investment in infrastructure and support for new business. On the other side of the coin, countries such as Cambodia and Myanmar are just beginning to identify digital economic opportunities. While there is great disparity, all countries and stakeholders need to address the challenges to sustain digital economic growth. The digital economy cannot grow while significantly large parts of the region have limited or no access to cyberspace. The Asia Pacific contains some of the most connected countries in Japan and South Korea, as well as some of the least connected. In Myanmar, the World Bank estimates only 2% of the population has access to cyberspace, and Cambodia and Papua New Guinea, only 8% of people have access. Infrastructure to deliver access to cyberspace is one issue. However, the rise of mobile devices is likely to see many of these countries skip the need for fixed broadband connections. The emergence of more low-cost handset manufacturers will make mobile devices more accessible, but taxation on mobile services usage may discourage lower-income users. Um, 
Deloitte has estimated that in Bangladesh, 18% of the cost of owning and using a mobile device is due to taxation, and in Pakistan they, rep they estimate that taxes represent nearly 30% of the cost of owning a mobile device, including taxes on SIM card sales, provincial and federal excise duties on services including SMS and data. Beyond the technical infrastructure challenges of providing greater access lie deeper developmental issues, including literacy and a lack of content in local languages. This will also inhibit the growth of domestic cybersecurity professionals in these countries, a skill gap they will share with developed economies, further diluting the pool of available skilled cybersecurity personnel. There is growing support for apps and content in local languages, such as Google's Indian Language Internet Alliance, which is working to develop news content in Indian languages to attract more users, and Indian device manufacturer Micromax, which has developed 10,000 apps in Indian languages in 2015. Trust in cyberspace as a platform for the transfer of funds and personal information is clearly a critical requirement for the growth of the digital economy. The World Economic Forum estimates that if national and multilateral cybersecurity efforts are not effectively implemented and cybercriminals retain their advantage, up to one trillion US dollars in the value of the global digital economy will not be achieved. This would increase to 3.2 trillion US dollars if the growth of digitization is slowed by a lack of confidence in cybersecurity. The growth of connectivity across the region brings with it many first-time users who are unlikely to exercise the cybersecurity practices necessary to secure themselves against cybercriminals and other threats. In particular, the use of pirated or unlicensed software creates a critical vulnerability. For example, 84% of all software in Indonesia and 81% in Vietnam are unauthorised copies, and therefore not provided with the security support necessary to maintain its integrity. Cooperation on cybercrime and cybersecurity efforts between countries and through multilateral organisations, as well as Interpol and the Asia-Pacific Computer Emergency Response Team, or APCERT, will be critical to making a more reliable and secure cyberspace in the region. The third major impediment to future growth of the digital economy is national and international legal and regulatory frameworks that discourage digital startups and their investors. Several countries have taken or are taking steps to address this specifically South Korea, Singapore, and more recently China, Australia, and India. Uh, we've already heard a little bit about the Digital India Pro policy. Um, the Startup India Action Plan is, is one particular part of that. It includes a package of tax exemptions, reduced regulatory requirements, fast tracks for business establishment and closures, and the establishment of a new startup hub and research incubators. Similarly, similarly in Australia, uh, Prime Minister Malcolm Turnbull, who actually made a lot of money out of the internet in its very early days, um, has established the Innovation Initiative, which includes tax breaks on startups and venture capital, allows intangible assets such as intellectual property to depreciate, and establishes funds for STEM graduates, ICT graduates, and high school digital, digital literacy programs. These programs follow in the wake of similar programs by the South Korean and Singaporean governments. In 2014, South Korean Ministry of Science, ICT and Future Planning committed $2 billion US dollars to support the nation's startup sector and eliminated restrictions on the venture capital industry. Singapore's high quality digital infrastructure and attractive environment for startups, private equity and venture capital consistently ranks it as one of the highest, uh, so the best places in the world to conduct, conduct digital business. Uh, I believe the, the World Economic Forum's Global Information Technology Report ranked it at two in 2015 and will probably be very, getting very close to the top spot. Um, as we've also heard earlier, the Trans-Pacific Partnership includes several measures intended to liberalise regional digital trade. TPP will require non-discriminatory treatment of digital products and suppliers, a prohibition on duties for electronic cross-border transactions, and a prohibition of local computing use requirements. Many of these conditions are inconsistent with China's draft cybersecurity law, such as the requirement in the proposed Chinese law to retain Chinese consumer data in China. This inconsistency will increase complexity for firms wishing to operate in both China and the TPP states, but I think the overall business just wants some clarity in what regulatory requirements they must meet. Other governments must now look to implement similar measures to enable the growth of the digital sector. The pace of development in cyberspace means that it is not possible to delay the development of new measures to grow digital business until other conditions such as connectivity have been met, as you've already been overtaken. In closing, the opportunities offered by the digital economy are significant, as are the challenges to unlocking its even greater potential. The region's public and private sector communities need to work together to overcome fundamental barriers to connectivity and support efforts to build trust and confidence in cyberspace as a platform for commerce. 
further efforts to enable growth by creating regulatory and taxation frameworks that encourage digital startups must also take place at the national level. Internationally, the rationalisation of regulations to reflect new business models in a global information environment that make it easier for private industry to operate across the region will enable greater growth. Overall, the contribution of the digital economy to the Asia Pacific is a net benefit and cooperation to support its growth will be critical in the years to come. Thank you.